Assigning a YouTube video to your students might seem like a good idea, but after watching the video for a few seconds, half of them are watching funny cat videos, some are watching dude perfect trick shots, and the rest are watching music videos from their favorite rap artist. There is a better way. Hi, my name is John Sowash, and I help teachers use the web to organize their classroom and design better lessons. Today, I'd like to share seven different ways that you can bring YouTube in to your classroom. The secret to using YouTube safely and effectively with your students is not to send students to YouTube.com. Instead, bring your YouTube videos in to your classroom. The first way to do that is through Google Classroom. I pulled up one of my classes right here, and I'm just quickly gonna share uh, two different ways that I have used YouTube with Google Classroom. The first is by creating a video discussion prompt. Now, I love using this for math. Uh, this is kind of like a video story problem. So I'm using the, the discussion question type in Google Classroom. I'm going to attach a YouTube video to that discussion prompt. Students will watch the video and then use uh, Google Classroom to share their answer with the rest of the class. Now again, the benefit of doing this is that when students click on this video, it does not take them to youtube.com. Instead, the video loads right there in Google Classroom. They can watch it, then they close by clicking off to the side, and they can begin answering this discussion prompt. I can also do this with a YouTube playlist. So here's my microorganism assignment. And this one I've actually attached a YouTube playlist to it. Now this one will open in YouTube, but because it is a playlist, the students are only going to see the videos that I have curated for them. The first video plays, then the second video, and it goes all the way down on the playlist. That is idea number one. Let's head over to Google Slides. Google Slides is probably my favorite way to assign YouTube videos to my students. It's super easy to do. Open up a slide presentation, go to the insert menu, scroll down to video, and you can either search for a video or copy and paste a URL into that video. Now I wanna show you one really cool bonus tip, and this is something that, again, makes uh, Google Slides an ideal place to assign video. I have a video here in my um, presentation, and I'm going to right click on that video. So two finger click on my Chromebook, and I'm gonna go down to Format Options. This is gonna bring up the secret video editing menu in Google Slides, and you can actually customize the start and end point for your video. In this example here, I found a video that was a little bit too long. And so I inserted the video and then you can see that I have manually adjusted the start time. So this video starts at 53 seconds and ends at one minute and 41 seconds. So my students only have to watch the portion of the video that's relevant to what we're learning about. This is a guided notes activity. Students watch the video and then fill in some notes along the left. Uh, this example here, is a compare and contrast. Students will watch two movie trailers from the book Fahrenheit 451 and make predictions about the major themes in the book. The last example uh, I'll show you here is the one from Google Classroom we just looked at. I took that same video, dropped it into Google Slides, and gave my students a space where they can actually show their math work. Um, and how they arrived at the answer that they're uh, submitting. Google Slides is a wonderful way to add video and a learning activity right alongside of it. Idea number three is to embed your video into Google Forms. Now, this is an ideal strategy if you are giving some sort of an assessment or you really wanna lock students in and help them focus on a particular learning assignment. I have an example here. This is a Google Classroom activity that I create for my students and I have them do at the beginning of each school year to make sure they understand how to use Google Classroom. So we have some introduction information here and then there's a short video. So students will watch this video introduction. It's only like 30 30 seconds long, and then they click next to go to the next portion of the form. They watch another video, learn a little bit more about Google Classroom, click next, and then there are some comprehension questions about that video. You can make a Google form as complicated or as short as you want. You can embed the video and then just a discussion prompt. And again, it really forces your students into focusing on that assignment when minimizing other distractions. If you want to take this to even the next level, Google Forms has a feature called locked quiz mode that will prevent your students from opening up other tabs or being 
getting distracted by anything else. It only works on Chromebooks, but it's a really great way to, again, focus students on the learning objective at hand. Google Forms is pretty good, but it's a little bit dry. It's not the most interesting way to assign videos to your students. If you are interested in seriously turning a video into a very engaging lesson, I would recommend that you check out Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle will turn any YouTube video into an assignment. Here's an example. This is a uh, really fun video by Kid President. Um, you go in, you pick your video, but Edpuzzle allows you to annotate your video with discussion questions, multiple choice um, questions, or other learning activities that students may have to link out to other websites. Right now the video is paused because it's waiting for me to respond to this discussion question right here, list five heroes. I would click in this box, type my response, and then click continue. The video will continue to play. I'll watch the video. You can see on the timeline down here, uh, these little bubbles are the different uh, activities embedded in the video. Uh, here's another discussion prompt. And as students watch, they'll be um, answering these questions. The real value of Edpuzzle are the analytics that you can get about which students have watched your video, how much of the video they've watched. None of the tools that I've shared with you so far track if students have actually watched the video. Edpuzzle will do that for you. Let me take a really quick look at the teacher dashboard. I'm going to go over here to this tab. This is a list of all the individuals who have watched this video. It shows you the percentage of the video that they've watched, whether or not that assignment has been turned in. I'd be able to click on uh, their name and view their answers as well. Edpuzzle is a freemium product. You can use it for free, but there are limits into how many videos you can assign um, and some of the features that you'll have access to. If this is a cool tool and you really like it, consider upgrading to a paid account, which will unlock more features and give you even more analytics to make sure that your students are actually watching the videos that you've assigned. Idea number five is a free Chrome extension called ReClipped. This really cool extension allows you to take notes while watching a YouTube video. Now this idea is particularly useful for older students in very technical, detailed courses. I taught anatomy and physiology and AP biology, and this tool would be wonderful for my students who are watching longer, more complicated videos. You can install ReClipped from the Chrome Web Store, once you have the extension installed, the next time you visit YouTube, you'll notice all kinds of new little icons will appear. Here's a video on the uh, causes of World War II. I'm gonna go ahead and click the play button. Students will be watching this video, and if they'd like to take notes, all they need to do is click one of the reclipped icons. I'm gonna click a summary note. That will open up the note tab. Students can take their notes over on the right side, and as they're taking notes, the timestamp for the video will automatically be added. This is very useful because later on, if they want to revisit that point in the video by clicking on 14, 16, you know, a timestamp, it'll rewind the video and allow them to rewatch that portion. Reclipped uh, will save all of your notes um, to the Reclipped website. Here's an example of one that I did previously. Students can share these notes with one another or with you. They can collaborate on these notes and refer back to them if they need to as they prepare for a test or exam. Idea number six is to use Google Sites to organize the videos that you share with your students. Now, there's actually two different ways that I think you could do this in your classroom. The first is to create a Google Site on which you would house all the videos that you want your students to watch. So you would create it, you would curate the content, and the students would look at it. So it'd end up being kind of like a web quest or even a hyperdoc on a particular topic. This works really well for kind of capsulated, uh, contained uh, units, maybe the book that you're reading or a particular animal that you're studying. The second way that you can use YouTube is by inviting your students to create a Google site to organize their learning on a particular topic. My wife and I had our oldest three kids do this recently. Uh, my oldest three kids are uh, ages 10, 
12, and 8, and each of them created a website on the oceans. This is my daughter Janelle's website. Uh, right now we are on the Atlantic Ocean page. She wrote all the text, collected all the photos, and found and embedded the YouTube videos. It's super easy to add a YouTube video to a Google site. Even a young student in elementary uh, should be able to, uh, to do this. We take advantage of YouTube restricted mode, which um, as parents gives us the peace of mind to be able to send our kids to YouTube and have them look for content, knowing that the worst content on YouTube will be blocked and hidden from them. YouTube restricted mode is something that your IT director would have to enable, but it eliminates the worst and most problematic parts of YouTube. It's not perfect, but it certainly is an improvement. Idea number seven is to share a YouTube video with your students through Google Meet. Now there's a reason that I've saved this idea for the end of the video, because it is the last idea that I would recommend using. I would much prefer that you use any of the six ideas that I've already shared with you than try to display a video to your students through Google Meet. Now it is possible, but it is tricky. If you want to give this a shot, you would need to use the share tab option under the present menu in Google Meet. That is the only uh, one of the three options that will share both the video and the audio. If you use the screen or the window option, the students will be able to see it, but they won't be able to hear it. Now, even if you share the tab, students will complain about poor video quality, choppy audio, and unfortunately, there's not a whole lot that you can do about that. Most of the issue is just dependent upon the internet connection um, on both ends of the virtual meeting. My recommendation would be to assign a YouTube video to your students to watch before your virtual meeting, use any of the six ideas that I shared with you so far, and then use my brain dump Google Jamboard activity to have your students organize their thoughts, share their reflections on that video. If you're interested in more ideas for using Jamboard, check out the video playlist that I've created. It's a great tool for engaging your students in virtual meetings or in a traditional face-to-face -face classroom.